Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my review of Tails, the Amnesic Incognito Live System. It is a Linux operating system, I believe it is using the Debian base, and it uses the GNOME desktop. The point of Tails is to provide you a live operating system and immediate access into a Tor network, the Onion Routing Network, or as some people may call it, the Dark Web. I think the term the Dark Web is just used by people who have no understanding of the capabilities of Tor, and are perhaps afraid of it, because some people are terrified of the dark. Ooh, the dark web, it's scary. Uh. No, it is just a means of encryption, a type of proxy design. It's not really proxy, it is packets are wrapped up like layers of an onion, and only have part of the source and destination within them. Sorry, it's a bit of a difficult one to really describe on a, on a screencast, but... And with that, it becomes next to impossible to work out who the actual user is accessing a server via the Tor network. Nearly impossible, because there have been cases where Tor users have been unmasked. So this is the desktop. It is a GNOME desktop. First off, I'm going to start with seeing what the memory usage is like. And you can see we have the user Amnesia, Wait, who's the user again? I've forgotten. Oh yeah, Amnesia, yes. 3-M, used, 681 meg of RAM. Not too bad, really, considering we are running as a live operating system. And running the GNOME desktop. Actually, that's about on par for just the GNOME desktop. Uname dash A shows the Debian Linux 4.9 kernel, so this is the Debian stable kernel. And this is Tails version 3.1. So the most important item on Tails is showing that we have Onion Routing enabled. We can open up Onion Circuits and see a bit of the route that is being taken. This will make a bit more sense when we start actually browsing the internet. In fact, since that is such an important feature of it, let's just go straight on with it and open up the Tor browser, which takes a moment to open. So we can see some of the circuits that has been taken. So if I do a search for my IP, this will default to DuckDuckGo for the search engine. And my IP address is uh, that 91 in anonymous proxy. And what you can see here is that the speed isn't exactly brilliant. And this is the price you pay for routing all around the internet instead of just taking a direct point to point link. So I want to go on a couple of websites and just kind of show the performance. I I don't want to use anything bandwidth hungry because that is not the purpose of Tor. It is anonymization. It's not built necessarily to go watching videos over it or torrenting. I know some people do. Yeah, it's a problem. The Daily Mail is just not even loading. I know why, because there's a load of junk in it and that takes ages to bring down. So next feature we can see the security settings. The security level of the browser. Low, this provides most usable experience. Medium, JavaScript is disabled by default on non-HTTPS sites. HTML5 video becomes click to play. Some mechanisms of display map equations are disabled. And on a high setting, JavaScript is disabled for all sites and a lot of mechanisms for showing rendering are disabled. So let's go to the medium setting and you'll immediately find that performance improves quite significantly. Yes, it does, <laughs> because a load of the JavaScript has been disabled, hence a load of the ad sites on this page do not work. Oh, despite the fact it does have uBlock Origin on here. Hmm. Let's go full screen on this. So quidsup.net. This is on the medium setting, and everything seems to look okay here. Security settings go up to high, and refresh the page. So if I force a refresh, you can see the font has changed and scaled vector graphics are no longer showing. So that's one of the differences on the high security setting. And let's read, let's try an article on a daily fail. Uh, it's still sort of rendering, but um, no, I think there's quite a few things missing there. Yeah, comments are missing. There's no autoplay video. Anyway. That's just showing some of the differences. So let's take a look at what else we get on the system. So on the desktop, we have Tails documentation. 
which opens a local file in the browser. We have Thunderbird for the email client, Pigeon Internet Messenger, and KeyPass X. Under Accessories, Hashing Program, GTK Hash. Under Graphics, we have GIMP and Inkscape, in case you fancy doing some doodling while you're browsing the dark web. Internet, I've oh, got a Bitcoin wallet. Onion Sharing, so that's a file sharing. And an unsafe browser, this is a browser that doesn't use a tool network. Oh, we get a warning. Do you really want to use the unsafe browser? Yeah, that's fine. This may take a while, so please be patient. Okay. <laughs> In case you didn't get a message first time, isn't it? Okay, I get the message. On the bright red background there as well. That's got the full suite of LibreOffice. So we have Sound Juicer for the media player, and that's just totem videos for the video player. As well as a couple of other multimedia applications there. Tails. So configure and delete persistent volumes if you have a USB device plugged into the system. And the Tails installer. Now this is a bit different to a standard Linux installer. So what it does is it just copies the image that you're using onto a USB stick. It, it's definitely not made for installing onto a hard drive. This is a system that you put on USB stick, take it with you wherever you want to go and use it on any computer. It is not really built for day-to-day -day usage. And let's finish up taking a look at the system monitor. So this is the graphical system monitor. So yeah, this is uh, going to show a higher memory usage than the 3-M that I used earlier, but okay. Despite using a few different applications here, memory usage has only crept up to 1.1 gig. So realistically, you get away with a machine that has about two gig of RAM. One gig might be a bit tight. It'll still run, but it'll be very slow by that point. So that was a look at Tails. It's a distribution I can't really draw a conclusion on, really, because it is unique in what it does. It is built for being a live operating system with immediate access to Tor. What I will say is it's been a long time since I last looked at Tails. Now, one feature it did have before, and I previously looked at it, was the ability to display a fake Windows XP desktop. No such ability exists nowadays. That could be more to do with the features of GNOME that prevent such a thing from happening, but yeah. That's just more an observation than anything, really. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.